I'm 35 and lost. How to find yourself after surviving a narcissistic parent? And this is something that is not talked about enough. And if you've come from a narcissistic family, you've grown up with narcissistic parents, you're going to really be able to understand this because I don't see many videos talking about this because, okay, so we've got out of that narcissistic relationship. We've managed to break free, which is absolutely amazing. We're on our own now. Um, but then no one tells you this is actually the really difficult part. This is the part that's really going to test you. This is the part that's really going to show um, your resilience, how strong you are. And actually it's going to be the, the making of you because that's amazing that you've been able to get out of that situation. But no one told me this part. No one showed me how difficult this part was going to be. And it was trying to figure out who I am. It's trying to figure out who I am. Who am I? Who are you? After this, you've endured all this narcissistic um, conditioning, um, this kind of different kind of love you've received. Um, and these different things that have been put on you, which you now have to unlearn and you have to reparent to yourself and no one tells you how difficult this is going to be and it is a journey of finding yourself after this because you are a little bit clueless to who you are and that's how I felt I don't know if everyone else feels like that but I felt a little bit mm, okay now I've got to figure out who am I what do I like what are the things that I enjoy what are, what are the things that I don't enjoy? What are the things that um, I like? What decisions can I make? Do I have, what boundaries will I accept? So, I mean, this is what we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about how we can find those things. But I think in order to, to figure out how we can find those things, I think we need to understand of why this kind of happens. And I think for me is, I realized like afterwards is that number one, there is no validation in this parent-child relationship that you have with your parent. And it is a vital thing that you need to get from a parent. It is important to have some form of validation from your parents to know that, okay, this is, say you have a certain talent of something and they validate that, they let you know, keep going, go towards it, da, 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 da. you know, it's a, it's a sense of validation that, you know, you're seen, you're heard, you're appreciated, you're, you're, you're noticed in a way of some form of something. And that's just one example, okay? And when, you're, when, you're, when you have lack of that, especially from a parent, especially from a parent, you grow up always trying to seek some form of validation, whether you realize it or not. I truly believe that even me included, you try and seek some kind of validation from something or someone, okay? And this is really down to the fact that you were never really given true validation. So you try and seek it somewhere. And I think it's really difficult to, um, I don't just think it's just, you know, just, oh, your talent or something. It's emotional validation as well. You know, if you're feeling a certain emotion, and that's not validated or it's seen as or it's dismissed or your emotional validation has turned into you being the one to validate their emotions and it foregoes your own emotion you're not validated with that so it's if you understand what I'm saying it's kind of a lack of validation that you're given from your parents often turns into you becoming a people pleaser um this is definitely something that I find that I've been been um you know it's one of the outcomes I guess it is one of the byproducts of growing up with a narcissistic parent is unfortunately um a lot of us will become people pleasers and this is from a lack of validation emotional validation just any kind of form of validation from your parents and this people pleasing behavior is you know th there's also like a lack of judgment from our own self our own feeling and um so you know it we don't want to disrupt when we don't want to um, we want to make sure that we're cater catering to other people's um, feelings and uh, 
we don't want to cause any disrupt in that. And, um, and we tend to put other people's needs before our own. And we do tend to find it hard to set boundaries. And this is something I've struggled with. I am used to be a people pleaser. Um, I used to find it very difficult to say no, even in situations where I didn't want to be in. And um, I do tend to find in relationships or, you know, any form of relationships that I do try and tend to put other people's needs before my own. And if I don't, I tend to think it's quite a selfish thing to do. And I've realized actually, um, this is not quite a healthy, healthy boundary. And I've learned this along the way, just, you know, just being by myself now. Um, but as soon as I got out of that really, um, narcissistic relationship with my mother, I did find that there is a, there was a, there was a need and a sense of some kind of external validation here. And I don't know if you guys feel that as well, that you too tend to people please, you do tend to don't have strong boundaries. Um, but as time goes on, you will get better with that, like I did. Um, so yeah, I think one of the ways we need to try and find ourselves, I honestly think is learning to, for me, just a little exercise was like learning to say no. Literally like learning to say no is... I know it sounds so simple, but actually so simple and easy, but it's actually not as simple and easy as people think just to say no. But it, as you start saying no, it, it does actually get a bit easier, you know? Um, saying no is important because saying no is, because you're saying no for a reason. You're saying no because you probably don't want to be there. It's not something you want to do. And if you want to say no because you know, you're doing something different, busy, um, and you actually, you know, don't want to be there, that's fine, you don't have to people please, you don't have to just say yes, because you feel that if you say no, it's going to upset everyone, and you should be thinking about their feelings, no, this is just a byproduct of growing up with a narcissistic, narcissistic parents, is that we always take care of them, we're always concerned about their feelings, we're always concerned about them they, there is a lack of concern for us and so we've grown up with that so um I think that's one good way um another thing that I'm trying to think that like I struggled with when coming out of a narcissistic what I struggled with was um I'm I, I'm not the best decision maker and I feel like people that grow up in narcissistic parents I don't want to speak for everyone. I can only talk about my personal journey. So please comment below if this sounds familiar, but like, but yeah, making decisions, decision-making. I, I think like, I always second guess myself. Like I know, like I, sh like, I always used to second guess my, my own decision-making um, because I do remember that many times I would ask my mother, like what the, her decision and you know because you're just wanting that kind of parent to to give guide you in some kind of form of decision making and um I realized actually her decision making is probably not the best I should probably not listen to that but that decision making I think comes from a lack of like control of like just your own life and always needing to be dependent on someone else's I don't know I maybe we become very dependent on that narcissistic parent of of that decision making and you know I think it confuses you when it can confuse your judgment and things when I sometimes I'd be like this is not a good decision then you would ask your responsible parent right and they'll be making a decision that you is not the right one you know deep down but they're a parent so you listen to them but that decision seems quite actually the path that would be the wrong decision so you second guess your own decision making even though you think the the decision that you had was right and then you ask your parent and they say no no no. and now I realize actually researching about more about narcissistic parents and stuff maybe that was um sprinkled with a little bit of like um sabotage you know and a bit of um envy and a bit of jealousy so actually decisions that would actually give you your freedom would actually make you go towards your goals would actually make you thrive and succeed I've realized a narcissistic parent does not really truly want that for you so it kind of um kind 
of clouds your own judgment in things and so you second guess your 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 decisions for so long so I think that's another thing as well it's like learning how to be more decisive of the things that you want to do and um just following your own intuition like I've learned this now along the way and I'm telling you it's not the easiest thing to do like just trusting your intuition is is the biggest thing that I've done that's helped me so far you know um even doing this like making these videos I remember used to say like I would love to make videos and the amount of like just like the amount of oh you know you need not you shouldn't be doing this and da, 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 da. I don't think this is blah 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 and then it makes you question your own your own feelings towards your own dreams your own goals your own aspirations and I've what I've got learned is you've got to I've learned this just cut the noise out just cut it out and just focus on your intuition you know I I truly believe that and um that we are very intuitive beings okay and we all have our own intuition and if something is really speaking to you you really got to listen to that like your gut your body your nervous system things like this they don't lie okay um your nervous system doesn't just go into fight or flight for no reason it's it's there for a reason so like our intuition it's there for a reason for us to trust that um and so just go with the decision that you really believe truly in your gut your own decision and this is what i mean about spending time by yourself is such a blessing coming from after coming from a narcissistic um family and growing up is that you have to just learn how to validate yourself in a way you haven't got no one to just help you with these decisions and um you have got no one just kind of clouding your judgment anymore so you've got that space to actually make these decisions and also what i've learned is that i'm very kind of not a, like a risk taker okay so when growing up I realized like risk taking was quite a scary thing but what I've but of what I've realized is it's not actually scary it's just that someone or the, the way you've been grown up has been imprinted in you to think that that is a scary thing to go and follow something maybe that is not the the path that everyone else has followed and that is okay to take risks and actually I encourage you to take some risks um to things that you want to achieve in your life or go for goals um I think it's important for us to to try and if we fail we fail but at least we tried you know um and I, I think the risk for me is I didn't want to take risks before I I was scared to take risks before I was scared to go for things that um like my goals and and go for things that you know even for in a job go for a higher salary even you know apply for that thing like I wouldn't want to do that because it's like this is not for me this is for someone else and actually this is a very skewed mindset and actually um it's again it's the lack of self it's a lack of self it's a lack of self-confidence lack of self-worth it's, it's a lack of value that we see upon ourselves and um and it and why I go back to narcissistic parents is because it is important that we have that foundational level from our parents to give us a foundational blocks to work from and they don't want to give that to us because if they give that to us means we have the we're going to gain autonomy we're going to gain freedom we're going to achieve our goals we're going to go to things we're going to have the confidence and they won't have the level of control that they need over us to be able to supply them with the energy and uh the supply that they need to keep their their narcissistic cycle going on and um so they don't want that for us so this cloud and judgment of decision making you know don't be too you know taking too many risks you might fail you know um just it's just this constant like oh you know and then another thing for me is um I'm a bit of a perfectionist in the sense of I don't want to make a mistake I want to be I want everything to be perfect and um and I think perfectionism to a certain extent 
is great. I mean, you have attention to detail. There's other great things that you can see, but I, I, I think there comes a thing with perfectionism and procrastination, which is another thing I, 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 I truly was challenged with a lot. And um, I think it comes again, just from the, the self doubt and just the lack of um, not feeling good enough, okay? You're never good enough in a situation like you could do something, right? And you want to show your parents and they will never ever, they'd never ever give you that, that well done, like really truly genuine, like, you know, give you that, wow, okay, that was good, you know? Like you would probably get it from other parents more than you would from your narcissistic parents. So you never truly got that. And I I think what that leads to is it leads to a lot of self doubt in yourself and, um, it leads to a lot of self-doubt. It leads to um, that feeling of never good enough. And I just want to let you know, like if you've come from a narcissistic parent, that feeling of never good enough, I'm sure you guys can understand what I mean. And it's just like, it's not a great feeling, but it's something that we can overcome. And that feeling of never good enough is, again, it's just a tactic just to make us feel less than. And so they can we can keep supplying them. And the thing is, once you get out and you're out of that situation and you're around different kinds of people, you start to realize, wait a minute, I'm actually good enough here. You start to realize bit by bit, wait a minute, this little bubble that I was in of never good enough, never can do this, never can do that, never, wait a minute, I'm around different people now, I'm around, you may even go to a new job, even, I'll give you an example, for me, I had a presentation that I had to do for work, okay, I don't really like public speaking, I'm a bit of an introvert, okay, this I find somewhat therapeutic and comes quite natural to me, because I'm talking about my own personal journey, I'm talking about things that I've actually, like, had a look into research about and you know so it's just something that I find quite flows quite easily for me but I had to do a presentation for work and I would literally was like panicking you know literally like nearly having a panic attack about it like could not stop thinking like had to make it like was trying to make it so perfect like And I I nearly didn't do it. I nearly, I said, I can do it. And then I said to myself, no, you can do this. This is just a presentation. You're just speaking. And I was thinking, I can't do this in front of all my colleagues and things like that. And I was just thinking, yes, you can. And I was, I just, for a second, it just, it just never stops that, that, that feeling of you're never good enough or you can't do it or something. So in that moment, I had to catch myself. I had to catch myself. I had to catch myself. I was like, no, this cycle is not going to continue here. I am good enough and I'm going to do this. I'm going to do the best I can. I'm going to prepare the best I can. And the worst that can happen is, you know, I didn't, you know, do the best or whatever. But I just, at least I gave it my best shot. And that is what I did. But I nearly didn't do it. And I thought, no. So I just want to let you guys know, like, if you ever get to a point where they ask, something is asked of you and you never feel good enough to do that, just try and catch yourself in that moment because that moment is really going to make you grow. That moment is such a moment of growth for you. It's like, that is a, like, that is your fight or flight. That's your, that's your flight to thrive in that moment. What I mean is like, you need to take that moment and be like, if that's a scary thing for you and that's a fear thing for you and like for us that have been through this kind of narcissistic family growing up that's the moment for us to be like no we are good enough we have to validate ourselves in that moment and we have to show up and we have to prove to ourselves that we can are capable of doing this because we've been told for so long or not been told or not even giving any validation nothing that this is good or bad or nothing so we just kind of lost and confused here to what is good and what isn't so we have to show up for ourselves you know what it was so good because I showed up I did it and they said to me like they said like mine was probably one of the best ones because I communicated very well and I didn't realize 
you know, maybe I have a skill in communication, in speaking, in presenting something and I didn't realise, you know. So sometimes you don't realise your own talent. Sometimes you don't realise what you're good at um, and you actually don't go after it. Uh, and you don't take that opportunity to show others um, because you're so fearful of of what the outcome might be. And actually it wasn't even that bad. I was actually told I was very good at it. So, and I just think like those kind of little moments really show to you that like you are good enough and you actually are talented. Like every one of you that's watching this now has a talent in you, has something in you and you've been told maybe you're not good enough and you so you stop yourself from going for that thing, but you are you are talented in something. Every one of us is. And um, it is important that family dynamic of parents to kind of give us some form of validation. Otherwise, we just don't know. And we do feel it, we do go through life feeling a bit lost. So I think, again, when we say talking about how to find ourselves, I think for me, that was another like moment for me. It was like, wow, I am good enough. I am good enough. I speak very well. Like that is one of my things. No, I speak well. I'm good at communicating. That is something I'm good at. And, and you know what? I'm proud to say that. I'm proud to say that now and sit here and say that because I would never have said that before. I would think, oh no, I can't say that. It's just too up yourself. No, it's not up yourself. There's, I think there's a fine line between noticing what you're good at and then just being like egotistical and up yourself and just full of yourself all the time. I think there's a fine line, but just to recognize the base form of you are good enough is going to really like shift how you view yourself, um, not just in just in life in general. And I realize it, it goes over to many different things, like even like in relationships, like I don't really like to talk about romantic relationships too much because um, I don't really, that's not my area of like giving advice on romantic relationships is just not me um I'm sure there's many other people that can do that but what I will say is that I think that lack of self that lack of confidence that lack of um just kind of accepting people pleasing it, it does not translate well in romantic relationships um, because you can be putting yourself in situations where I believe that you're not giving yourself the best opportunity um, for the best person to, to, to match even your future self, okay? And, um, you know, people pleasing and all these things and creating these boundaries and all these things. Once you learn how to do that, I think it really translates well when you're trying to find a romantic relationship I think having boundaries having um you know these kind of not being a people pleaser and, they, and these kind of things I think um is much better to find someone that will align with you and understand you and respect you and value you um yeah so yeah, but moving on, as I don't really like to talk about romantic relationships too much. Um, if you really want to hear any more about that and well, I, to be fair, um, just quick, quick sidetrack here. I did want to talk about um, one thing about romantic relationships is when you've gone no contact with your narcissistic parent, kind of introducing that topic to someone that maybe you're starting to date, I think is really tricky. Um, I don't really know the I don't really have all the answers but it's something I'm navigating through life and uh yeah it's a tricky one I'm not going to lie um but you know maybe we'll talk about that in another video so yeah how to find yourself <clears throat> so yeah all these things that I've talked about like this need for perfectionism decision making like um the lack of validation just all these things and like turning them around into like into things that you can you don't need that external validation you can validate yourself that's why being alone for a moment after this is very important to find yourself you know trusting your gut trusting your intuition is so important for me it's been so important and I've made much better decision making trusting my gut rather than doing what other people are doing or what other people think or whatever or what people may think 
I don't care. Do you know what I mean? So just trust your gut, trust your intuition and trust who you are. And and it is good because it actually trusting your gut is trusting who you are. And um, yeah, <clears throat> and I found that I've made much better decisions trusting my intuition, okay? Um, because I'm never gonna self sab I'm well, I'm I'm don't really wanna self sabotage myself. I don't wanna make decisions that are not gonna be in the best interest. I wanna make decisions that are going to go towards my dreams, my goals, my those kind of things, you know? Being a positive place, peaceful and positive place. Um and yeah, and just doing things, you know, as I said before, that presentation I was talking about, doing things that when you feel like you are fearful of just go towards it I feel like you will find a lot about yourself going towards things that you're fearful of um thinking that you can't do it and then when you do it you're like I can do it and then if you can do it once you can do it again also I would say like another thing is just that feeling of feeling lost and you know that that feeling I do feel also like narcissistic parents I, I feel in a way give a lot of guilt they share a lot of their own regrets, their own their own negative feelings in life. And they put that, they pile it onto you. They just like dump it on you. And it's just like piles up and up. And imagine every year that you've spent with this narcissistic parent, you've had years and years of conditioning of negative, negative talk of all their regrets, of all the blame and uh, all the gaslight, all the manipulation. And just imagine that just like every year building up, building up, building up, building up. And so you're dealing with a lot. You've had a lot being put on you, okay? You've like been a magnet to all these things. And so when you're away from this now, it's kind of like, it kind of kind of lingers in you a little bit. You know, it doesn't just just go straight away. And so you have this kind of sense of, I feel like you have a sense of just not feeling adequate enough, just not feeling, um, just feeling a bit lost. And so to shrug those feelings off for me has been so like amazing. That just, just get rid of those negative feelings. Like I don't watch TV, I don't watch the news. I don't watch things that are going to infiltrate my mind with negativity, no. I get up in the morning and to Louise Hay, I'll listen to some positivity stuff, you know, and I will reprogram my mind, you know, and get rid of these negative feelings and know that, you know, these feelings of sometimes of us feeling lost, not, not good enough, inadequate, all these things it sometimes just come from their own internalized feelings from their from our parents that have just not dealt with their own issues and then they've just kind of dumped it on us and so and then we feel a bit like what the hell lost because we like we haven't really expressed our own feelings in a sense and then we like what what is our feelings and so and when the feelings are not validated there's like an emotional it's a lack of our own emotional needs so sometimes we don't even recognize our own emotions our own needs and we don't recognize when we need to regulate those needs and we need to then put self-care back into those needs and to our emotions and regulate them and it's absolutely um 100 okay for us to do that to regulate those um those emotions for ourselves but sometimes there is a, a lack of emotional awareness even in our own own emotions we're very good at recognizing everyone else's emotions we are we could be a therapist probably we could be a therapist for everyone else and we could be there for everyone else and and we could be a, a listening system we can be an ear we can we can be that and we can give great advice probably but um when it comes to ourselves we don't regulate those emotions enough and for me I find that I I, I don't um, regulate my emotions enough so and um yeah and even when like I've done something good I didn't want to celebrate it sometimes and that's why I did in one of my other videos I was like celebrate the small wings I got to 1k subscribers I know for other people it might be very little but it's a small it's a win and I need to celebrate it and that's what I'm learning to do and I think like these are very important small little steps that we can do to find ourselves like to celebrate ourselves when we've done something good to regulate our emotions if we're upset about something if we're it's okay we've been through a lot you know it's okay you know we're not weak because of this and just the different emotions that we have and to recognize these 
And so what we would do for others, like how we would care for others, we need to pour that care back into ourselves. And, and so we can regulate that emotion so we can be more like emotionally aware, not just for ourselves, but just, you know, in certain situations, we're emotionally aware of how we feel. Um, again, that helps with like setting our boundaries, not being people pleasers, making decisions, good decision making. And um, I think it has a, a knock on effect for everything else. Um, yeah, so these are very important, but I think the like the most thing like defining ourselves is, you know, it does take time. I'm not perfect. I've still got a long way to go, but I can tell you that I'm I'm way more sure of myself than I have ever been in my life, and it's it's a hard it's a hard it's it's hard, but it's also it's weird. It's, it's difficult but it's very rewarding in a way like the, when you get to the other side like you can feel yourself becoming the person that you want to become like you are becoming that individual like you are becoming I'm becoming Nana I'm becoming the person that I was always meant to be like I am pursuing the things I want to pursue I'm doing the hobbies I want to do same with you guys you'll you'll find yourself doing the things that you want to do and you're in a different room now you're in a different environment so you don't need to compare yourself to the older environment when I was talking about that presentation I'm I'm in a new environment now I'm with other people and I thought oh I'm never going to be good enough but no that's because that's what I was just told in that certain environment and you and you you get out of that environment into a new one and you realize ah oh, there's all different kinds of people here you know I'm actually not that bad and you will find that you're actually much better than you think you are. And that's why I say they t- tend to choose, your narcissistic parents tend to choose the ones that do have talent in them. They do have a goal. They do, they're ambitious. There is something in you that your narcissistic parents saw that they wanted to kind of want to strip away from, or they didn't want to validate that in some way. And, you know, and this is your time to find who you are and it is rewarding to to go through that you're going to have days where it's going to be difficult you're going to feel lost you are you're going to feel like you're going to feel lost you're going to have to go through a stage where you're going to parent yourself you're going to have to rebirth yourself in a way kind of like figure out who you are what you like what are your boundaries and it's going to take some trial and error you might not get it right the first time it's a trial and error but I'd rather do this trial and error than never try and be stuck into something that I would never thought, you know, taking on someone else's traits, taking on someone else's negative habits, taking on someone else's conditioning. No, you have a life left and, you know, you are going to become who you are. And that's just, we need to start seeing that as like an amazing thing that we've been given this, like we've got this we've got to this point with this strong and resilient we've got to this point imagine all the stuff we've been through we're on the last we're on the last stretch now and this is you know the last stretch is not always the easiest one it's the one where you're running out of breath you need water you know you feel like giving up but no it's gonna might be a little bit a bit rocky but trust me it's gonna get easier and easier okay you're gonna be able to breathe you're going to be able to enjoy that water. <laughs> You're going to be able to 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 really understand who you are. And I think it's actually a very salient thing to go through life, to go through actual the bottom, to actually kind of rebirth yourself in a way to find out who you are. Because without all these challenges that we've had, that we've had, um, how would we be able to get this point to actually start afresh and not everyone's had that opportunity to do that and I'm really trying to put a positive thing on this because not everyone when I say not everyone's had an opportunity to go through challenges like this I mean it in a sense of like we have to we've been through these challenges there's nothing we can do about it we can't unfortunately change the fact that we grew up with narcissistic parents but what we can do is change our story we can change how we're going to view ourselves we're going to change who we're going to become now going forward we don't need to take on this subconscious programming that they've given us this negative thing this lack of self-worth this lack of confidence this lack 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 no we don't need to do that we can we can 
we can get rid of this lack and we can start driving ourselves to a new lane here of you know of possibility of abundance of self-worth of self-value of self-confidence and we can just understand that we have the opportunity to do that now and um that's what I'm doing every day I'm just finding finding ways to catch myself and when I say catch myself if I find myself doing the lack 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 I'm gonna catch 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 you know I'm gonna try and catch it and try and reverse it you know um because it's a constant it is a constant catching yourself of picking up traits that you don't want to carry on for yourself and I think just these little things that we've talked about today I think for me it's really helped me find myself in a sense of 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 who I am um and there's a lot more I could talk about um but I'm just gonna give you a few of, of what you know is helping me in a sense um but yeah being by myself has really helped me it's really helped me because it's made me understand that I don't need I don't need external validation. I don't need others telling me that I'm good. I don't need to be fearful. I can go for things that I want to do like this, even though this is kind of scary. I'm speaking to sometimes thousands of people in here that are watching and it's scary to share your journey and your things. And, you know, people might not agree with everything you're saying or believe everything you're saying. And da, da, da. It's, it's okay. You know, it's not for everyone. I'm not for everyone. You're not for everyone. And that's okay. We don't need to people please everyone. We we can never do that in this world. It's never gonna it's never gonna happen. Um and I think that's okay to come to terms with that's okay. And um yeah. So anyway, I'm gonna go because I feel like we're going left. Right. <laughs> um, but I really hope that you've got something from this. Even one thing from this, I'm happy because I just want you guys to get one thing from this let me know how you're finding yourself if you're feeling a bit lost it's okay we're here we're a community you are my people I really say you are my people because you guys get it the ones that grew up from narcissistic parents you will get it and you do get it and it makes others feel seen it makes me feel seen and heard and I read the comments because you know I know you guys understand it and um i appreciate all of you and i'm really glad that we have a growing community here that for us that we do need this for us and i'm so glad and i really hope that people that watch this like we're going to be taking trying to see the positive side of this and not take on negative traits going forward and yeah and we got this we really do and we've got this together so please leave the comments subscribe if you want to and um yeah and guys, I will be going live very soon so you can see me in live interacting with you guys in person. So, yes, love you all. Stay positive. You are good enough and you're not alone in this. Okay. <laughs>